this uh, morning session, uh, we have uh, Jose Manuel Moreno Fernandez, who will talk about a spectral sequence for tangent cohomology of algebraic operates. So, all thank you, Joanna. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks to all the organizers for inviting me to give a talk. And well, this is a project that I love. So I think all of you know him already. Um, if not, he's giving a talk later, so you can meet him. Um, what I prepared here, let me see your faces so I, I get more. Yeah. So what I prepared here is a very naive um, talk because I didn't want to get um, too, too into the details. So the first part will be very trivial to experts and will be basically an introduction to algebraic deformation theory. Uh, then at the end, I will speak a bit about this work that uh, we've been doing. Um, so let me give uh, the first five minutes uh, what the thing is. So what uh, we do is to construct a family of spectral sequences that um, they have interesting targets, in, especially in algebraic topology. They are, well, everything is over a field of characteristic zero in this talk. Some of the things generalize, but uh, let's stick to that. And if we do so, or spectral sequences, um, we can relate them to minimal models of uh, rational homotopy theory and so on. So these spectral sequences turn out to be quite explicit and computable as far as the methods of rational homotopy allows you to, which in practice uh, might be uh, slightly less. And well, um, we construct these spectral sequences in a language of operatic algebras. So we can give a statement which covers a, a bunch of cases. You can specialize to several categories of algebras. Um, so I will give you what the pages of the spectral sequences look like here. So we get a spectral sequence whenever we have a nice enough manifold M, well, actually a topological space, but for this to be uh, better, let's uh, stick to a smooth and manifold. Um, then the second page looks like a convolution algebra. Um, well, each is a convolution algebra, where a convolution means that you have uh, the set of linear maps from a certain co-algebra, in this case, co-commutative, to an algebra. Here we have the uh, loop homology algebra of M based. And the target is the free loop space of, um, of M. So, we have, uh, so some of you might think that this looks a lot like the Serre spectral sequence, which actually uh, the second page is isomorphic to that. But we, we, the way we build this spectral sequence is algebraic and completely explicit in terms of uh, Adam Silton model. So we will speak about that later and, and you will see that uh, is more than that. So we get this in the category of DGAs. And if you go to the category of uh, commutative differential credit algebras, then you get a spectral sequence, which has also a convolution um, uh, shape and converts to something which is interesting to the homotopy groups of some uh, space of self maps. And if you go to DGLE algebras, again, you get a convolution and then this spectral sequence has as a target the homotopy groups of the classifying space of the thing above. Okay, so taking a closer look to, to the second page of the spectral sequence, we find that um, the target here is a very interesting object in modern algebraic topology um, because it carries a lot of uh, nice structure. So um, if we start with a simply connected, oriented, smooth and manifold, then there is something, um, so we take, so L of X here is the free mapping space from the circle to your X, so uh, unbased loops on X. And this is just the homology group of, of that thing with a shift by degree, the dimension of the manifold. And well, this has, a, under these conditions, it has a so-called chas sullivan product, which is a way of combining the intersection product of X with the concatenation of loops in some way, it's complicated to define. And it gives you an associative and commutative product in, in this uh, homology. Now, the problem is how to compute uh, this guy, this structure. So one way of computing this, um, I have to say from now on for a while, I will not speak about my own results. And 
I won't be able to mention all the people that proved these theorems I will talk about, so I apologize in advance. Um, I really admire them. So um, one of the ways of computing this homology with the commutative product is to compute the spectral sequences with the same shape as ours. And some other way is to use host shield cohomology. So um, if you take the CR code chains on your space X and you take um, the host shield cohomology of that, then this host shield cohomology carries something called a cap product, which shouldn't be confused with a cap product here, um, which is an associative and commutative product. And for any commutative ring, there is an isomorphism between the just Sullivan loop product at this level and the cap product in host shield cohomology. So this is one way of computing this uh, thing. Now, I can also show that um, you, can, you can use a different DGA for computing this host shield cohomology. Um, you can take the, the chains in the loop space of X, which as, as you know, uh, it's a DGA when you take the move loops. And this is another uh, way of computing uh, this thing. Now, um, the main point or one of the main advantages of using these chains on the, on the loop space is that you can, uh, at least over a field of characteristic zero, then you can take the cobar on that or you can use an Adam Silton model. And then it's very nice because Adam Silton models are very nice and, and you can um, use them to compute this thing, right? So there is more structure here. So as you know, or maybe I can tell you that hot seal cohomology is a very rich structure that you can uh, study. And another thing which is very interesting in, in modern algebraic topology and doing with uh, free loop spaces is some string bracket uh, which corresponds to the gerstein haber bracket, at least in characteristic zero. And it is still, as far as I know, an open problem um, if this holds with more general coefficients. Now, um, so from now on, uh, so the next uh, 25 minutes or so will be devoted to the study of classical Hossi cohomology. So this is, uh, um, I will ex explain algebraic deformation theory in a very naive way. Um, because the spectral sequences that we are going to build have as target, as we are seeing, um, a cohomology theory. So I want to take this chance to introduce the cohomology um, theory. And uh, sorry. And let's see how this uh, leads us to modern deformation theory with more Ricardian elements and so on. So the Hostile cohomology of an associative algebra, you can generalize to DGA or infinity algebras, but I'm going to be very naive here, is a co-chain complex. So it's a non-negatively graded co-chain complex. So it has a differential and it comes with a cap product. It's an associative product, which is not commutative, um, but it induces a commutative product when you pass to homology. So with this structure, we have a DGA and you can find that you have also a Gerstein Haber bracket which is a Lie bracket up to a shifting degree and which behaves in a nice way with the product. And well, as I say, this complex is very rich and it has some BV structure and it has some brace operations and it has a lot of things. So it, it is really a rich object to study. And in a way that I'm going to explain, it controls the deformation theory, at least of formal deformations of, of the algebra A. Now, one way of um, stating how um, rich this guy is, is to recall that it, it was proven that uh, whenever you have an associative algebra A or some more general guys. Sorry, then Pepe. The, um, uh, I have one question. On the frame little two dx operat, then uh, the Hossiel complex is an algebra where that, so that kind of uh, gives you how the operations uh, are obtained here. Um, now, when you take the cohomology of this thing, well, this is called the, the Hossiel cohomology. So why would we be interested in deforming algebras in any sense? So probably the most groundbreaking results that everybody should kind of know, or probably already knows, um, is Komsevich. Uh, maybe I have some comments or something. Uh, Pepe. 
Uh, I don't hear you if, if you are no. speaking. Okay, I hear you now. Uh, because there was a question from Pedro. Hola, Sorry. Pepe. I'm going to switch off this. Can, can you hear me? I do. Uh, just in the previous slides, the, the BV operator, I suppose you're assuming that A has like an extra structure like Frobenius or something. Yes. Because so, in general, I guess we, we can we can not, I mean, not worry about it in, for example, for Delin, yes, I suppose. I guess there's... Yes, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to convince you that the richness of the hostile complex might... Uh, being a very um, beautiful and rich opera. Right, of course, of course. Thank you. Thanks to you, by the way. Um, okay. So yes, I, I was mentioning why would I want to deform an algebra? Well, it depends what so you read. Maybe the most uh, well-known result is Konsevich's quantization theorem, which uh, is a link between classical and quantum mechanics. Don't know much about that, but if you start with a Poisson manifold and you look at the algebra of functions over that manifold, then he gives an equivalence between the deformations. Uh, I mean, he gives a correspondence between the deformations of the algebra A with uh, coefficients extended in some way, modulo equivalence with Poisson brackets on, on the algebra of functions. So he's able to, to give a bijection here. And that's one of the main reasons why deformation theory of algebras was uh, a lot of studied. Maybe a decade ago or so, it was a very rich uh, thing to study. Now, I have other interest in, in deforming algebras, but uh, I will not mention them here. And I just want to, to very briefly mention what the, what the Hostile complex looks like, because it is very explicit. So first of all, it is a cold chain complex. And in degree n, we have the linear maps of a and n tensor copies of a into a. Here, a is an algebra over k. And it comes with a differential, which uh, increases degree by 1. And what the differential is doing is just to use the multiplication of, uh, of the algebra in each two consecutive uh, positions and applying f to that. But you have to extract the first and last factor. So this is squares to zero and you have a coaching complex. It has a cap product, which is very easy to define. If you take a linear map uh, F with P inputs and G with Q inputs, then uh, you can evaluate F as, as the first P components, G at the last Q components, and you multiply using the product in A. And, and you have another uh, product here. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, that, so, so far we have the DGA structure. Now we also have a gersten haber circle product, uh, which gives the Hochschild complex the structure of a Rayleigh algebra, which is, uh, so don't confuse this symbol with the composition. So if you take a, an F and a G, what you do is to insert G in, in the, into F in all possible ways with a certain sign, and that gives you some structure which is not quite associative, but close to being associative enough to define a bracket. In this sense, you can define the Kirsten Haber bracket as the anti commutator of this thing, of this circle product. So that's uh, the main structure of the Hostile complex. Now, classical Hostile deformation theory starts with an algebra A, and we want to deform its multiplication. That means that we embed A into a bigger algebra. So what we do is to extend the scalars uh, of our algebra A. We put A inside a bigger ring. And now a deformation of the multiplication of A is a new multiplication in, in this uh, bigger algebra, such that when you restrict to the A component, you get the, the product that you had in A. Um, this is a truncated polynomial algebra, but uh, you can take, of course, higher uh, truncated polynomial extensions, or you can go all the way up to formal power series. And, and well, you can actually generalize this to, to other maximal ideals in Artinian rings, but I'm not going to enter into that. So um, what we are saying is that the deformations of the algebra A with coefficients extended 
by a certain uh, algebra are multiplications in the new algebra that are restricted to the original one on A. And now we don't want to study uh, multiplications on this bigger algebra per se, but we want to give some notion of equivalence relation. And if we take two such deformations, then um, we will say that the two uh, are equivalent if and only if you can find an automorphism of the big algebra that distributes this, uh, this uh, product, right? So an algebra automorphism of the bigger thing. Um, okay, so what does this have to do with Hostile complex? Well, the thing is that if you have a new multiplication, so let's focus on, on this truncated uh, small polynomial algebra. These are called the infinitesimal deformations of the multiplication of A. So we, if we have uh, a multiplication there that restricts to, to the one of A, then we can write the multiplication as the sum of two terms, one that doesn't have a term in T and the other one has a term in T. If we write it like this, then M0 and M1 uh, naturally live in the second uh, uh, cohomology, sorry, co-chain group of the Hoxhill complex. So but you can see that uh, it starts to appear quite naturally. Now you can show uh, if you write uh, this M, and you try to write the associativity condition, you will find out that this multiplication will be associative precisely when the thing that you are adding is a co-cycle for the differential of the Hoxhill complex. Um, so multiplications corresponds to co-cycles. And if you write that two multiplications be equivalent, you can show that they will be equivalent if and only if um, the two co-cycles that are uh, creating those multiplications actually represent the same class in the second Hossian cohomology. I have to say that some people suspend and they suspend uh, Uh, okay, so so far so good. So Pedro, I think we have problems What's hearing. Um, sorry. Maybe. Sorry, my, my connection is also a bit choppy, so sometimes I'm it, it may break. <laughs> she may. I think we missed the last uh, sentence, uh, Pedro. Uh, Pepe said, sorry, Pedro. It was just that. Uh, uh, this step we call this in terms of uh, that was my comment. Um, Study hiding scalars of your algebra A by um, truncated polynomial algebra of such a small size, you can go higher order and you can try to study higher deformations of this multiplication. And then you can play the same game. And another thing that you can do is to try and extend a multiplication that you have defined on the end for truncation, so to say, to a, to a next level. And this is also captured very well by the Hossil complex. Then you can show that the obstructions for extending a multiplication of uh, the end truncation to the following, um, the extension exists if and only if a certain class in the third cohomology group vanishes. Um, but now something very funny happens. And, and now what happens is that higher multiplications are associative if and only if the DGLE structure of the Hossil code chains start to appear. So we will have an associative multiplication whenever this element M is a more Cartan element in the same sense as Urthi was mentioning, uh, not in the Hossil complex, but extending scalars um, by the maximal ideal in which, in which you are deforming. So um, associative multiplication in the end for truncated algebra correspond to more Cartan elements in a certain digitally. Now, what about the equivalence of multiplications? So if you have two multiplications, as Ursini was mentioning also, 
you can introduce. So here you have a, a DGLE algebra. This DGLE algebra has a zero component, which is a classical Lie algebra because you don't have any grading there. And if this algebra is nilpotent or complete in some sense, then you can define the gauge group, which is a group that you can cook up, which acts on the elements of degree one or minus one, depending on your grading convention. Uh, so the thing is that if you pick a more cartan element and you let this group act on a more cartan element, then you get again a more cartan element. So this action defines an equivalent relations by taking the orbits and the different orbits are called the gauge equivalence classes. And each gauge equivalence class corresponds to a different uh, equivalence class or multiplication. So that's how the DGLE structure uh, appears here. Now, um, you can see that there is an, an isomorphism, a, a, sorry, a correspondence between infinitesimal deformations up to equivalence uh, and the more cartan elements of this DGLE algebra modulo gauge. Um, okay, so now this Hochschild complex, uh, there are several ways of, of looking at it because what I want to say is that at the end of the day, you are not so much interested if you want to study the deformation theory of A. Uh, what is interesting to you is not exactly the Hochschild complex, but the homotopy type of the DGLE structure of this um, complex. So you can look at it from different ways. So this is naturally isomorphic to the OM from the bar construction of A into A. And uh, another way of seeing this is that, well, the, con the bar construction of A is a co-algebra, so you can look at the co-derivation of, of that uh, co-algebra. It has a natural differential and brackets, and it's naturally inducing the, the structure in the Hochschild complex. Now, um, I want to make a link between deformations and derivations. So for example, you can think that in characteristic zero, and at least for commutative differential graded algebras that are cofibrant, you can show that the derivations on A are equivalent to this thing. So in some sense, the DGLE, there is a DGLE structure that we want to study, and that's the important thing. And now how, how do we study this? Okay, so what I'm doing for, for associative algebras can be done for much more general things, like, well, not only Lie algebras and commutative algebras, but you can deform many things, not even algebraic structures, right? In any way, what you want to do at the end of the day is to construct a deformation complex of the P structure, uh, possible P structures on A. So you can do the same thing, as I say, with uh, Lie algebras and uh, with commutative algebras, and you get known complexes governing the deformations. Now, um, what is the general deformation theory or how this is uh, studied, uh, at least in characteristic zero today? So basically, we start with a graded vector space V, and we want to put the structure of an algebra of type P on V. With those two ingredients, there is a DGLE or L infinity algebra, depending on this category of algebras and the graded vector space, in such a way that more Cartan elements in this uh, L infinity algebra equip V with a structure of type P. And uh, we can therefore say that this L is governing the corresponding deformation uh, problem. More generally, if P, uh, if the category of algebras is governed by a nice operat, then you can use the convolution DGLE algebra, which is given by taking the symmetric, uh, the symmetric maps from the causal dual cooperat of P to the endomorphism operat of the vector space. And that's uh, also called the deformation complex. This recovers at once the Hochschild, the Harrison, and the chevalier eilenberg um, So, and, and you can use opera theory to study all those, uh, all this uh, Hochschild theory at once. So what I did for associative algebras, you can do it using operats uh, very nicely. Uh, well, then we are saying that more Cartan elements are, um, points that, that represent uh, as an associate, well, not an associative, but a structure of some type. Well, you want to think of the model space of the formation. So you want to build a space that captures all possible structures and you want to study what this space looks like. If you are working over a field of characteristic zero, then there exists a very beautiful 
an explicit simplicial set that is in a very precise sense, uh, the model is based of the deformations. So uh, this is given by a functor, the more cartan functor, which goes from the category of uh, complete or nilpotent uh, L-infinity algebras to simplicial sets. So uh, there are uh, other simplicial sets which are equivalent to this, uh, but I'm going to focus on this one because it is very visual. Um, so if you start with an L-infinity algebra L, you can build up this new simplicial set so that its and an simplices are given by the usual uh, more cartan elements of certain L-infinity algebra. And that L-infinity algebra is just to extend the scalars of L by the commutative differential graded algebra of polynomial forms on the standard N simplex. So the important thing here is that um, this thing, as we already know, um, has a simplicial structure. And that simplicial structure, by using those augmentations and, and the phase and the genesis, you can induce a, a simplicial structure on, on the more cartan um, simplicial set that I'm speaking about. So the funny thing is that the zero simplices of this thing, um, in that case, uh, this algebra reduces to the base field and then tensoring does nothing. So the usual more cartan elements of L are nothing but the zero simplices of this simplicial set. And now, so two more cartan elements in L will be equivalent if and only if this gauge relation exists, if and only if the, the, the structures that sit, set and set prime define are equivalent. You can see that uh, in the simplicial world, there is a very nice algebraic uh, way of writing that down. So two more cartan elements will be equivalent if and only if you can find that one simplex that has as face as faces this set and set prime. So that means that you can find a degree one element in this algebra. Um, so it has an explicit form such that when you apply this simplicial structure that you have in this more cartan simplicial set, you recover one structure and, and the other one. And this is the starting point of uh, the more cartan simplicial set for studying deformation theory. Now, I, I don't know how fast am I going um, because it, yeah, okay. Um, so I was planning to do a, a break at some point, but I'm not sure. Uh, are there any questions up to now? I guess no. So then, um, okay. Then this was a crash course on, on deformation theory. So um, what we were doing is, well, Pedro and I constructed these spectral sequences that I'm going to speak about in the next part because I finished the first. Um, this, Spectral sequences um, converge to uh, or are related to deformation uh, complexes. And then I wanted to study this deformation theory. So we go back at the beginning. So um, what we want to do now is to construct this family of spectral sequences that are related to deformation complexes. So in order to do that, we need to speak about towers of cofibrations and derivations. Okay, so let's go back at the spectral sequence that we were speaking about. Uh, I have some question or something. Uh, so yeah, somewhat, somebody is asking what is known about this modelly simplicial sets. Well, actually the, the more curtain thing is a, is a can complex. So it is a very nice object. It is completely explicit and has all nice properties that, that you want to, to have. So, I mean, it is still difficult to work with it, but it's nice. Um, so um, let's look at the spawn page of the spectral sequence that we get for the differential credit algebra case. Um, now, so this arises when we specialize to the category of differential credit algebras. Now, let's say that I start with a space X and I want to study this differential graded algebra, the chains in the loop space. What has the, the, so what do the ingredients in these spectral sequences have to do with this? Well, first, the first thing is that 
Um, similar to what happened with the equivalent model that Urti was mentioning, when you take this algebra A and you take a cofibron replacement of this thing that you can think it is uh, the Adam Silton model, and you take the, the indecomposables of that thing, that is the graded vector space of generators with the linear part of the differential, and you take homology, then you get the homology of the space up to you know the unit doesn't appear and so on. But what I mean is that the first slot in this OM is the equivalent homology of your algebra A, while the, the second is the ordinary homology, or what is the same, the ordinary homology of the cofibron replacement of A, and the target is the hot shield cohomology. So we can see that the second page has a lot to, to do with uh, different homology theories. Um, okay, so remember that, uh, so what we want to do is to exploit the notion of a co-fibration in P algebras. So remember that whenever we have CW complexes, the idea of, uh, of CW complexes is that you can build the spaces step by step by starting with, uh, with some cells and attaching things and at each step, you specify you 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 are only allowed to attach things of a certain degree, and the differential um, sorry, and the attaching map tells you how to attach it to the previous space that you had, and that is what we want to mimic in the algebra case. We want to give cellular decompositions of, uh, of algebras. This is nothing new, uh, because cofibrations of P algebras already exist. We have seen some token model categories. And we know that we can speak about cofibration. Uh, however, um, cofibrations per se are, um, you know, defined as having the left lifting property with respect to blah blah blah. So we want to be very specific in this work. So we found convenient this framework of Bowes. So this is a result of ours. Um, so Bowes gave this notion. You know, when model categories were started to be studied. Some authors gave some alternatives in which they weakened or assumes in order to do homotopy theory abstractly. Uh, one of the people doing this was Bass, and he defined cofibration categories, which are similar to model categories, but you throw away the notion of a vibration and, and you use different things. Now, <clears throat> we can prove that if you start with a nice enough opera P, so we want it to be reduced, in great vector spaces, the algebras are connected uh, over a field of characteristic zero, then we prove that the, we can end off the category of P algebras with the structure of a Bowes cofibration category. So weak equivalences as, a, as expected are the quasi isomorphisms. And what is interesting for us are the cofibrations. So the cofibrations are those maps from B to A, such that A is built from B by freely attaching generators so that this becomes an isomorphism, this in natural map. I don't know if my uh, mouse is in, uh, I'm pointing things. Okay, so with this notion of mouse. vibration. Uh, we, see, we see the mouse when you move it. Oh, great, thank you. Um, okay, so we want to define what is a cellular tower of co-fibrations. So a cellular tower of cofibrations is a sequence in which at each step you are creating a new algebra uh, in such a way that you um, uh, freely attach generators, but like in the CW complex case, uh, you are only allowed to, to glue generators of a specified degree and the differential has to kill some cycles in the previous algebra. Mm, these kind of uh, towers of cofibrations abound in, in algebraic topology, and we have Quillen, Sullivan, and Adam Silton models that are examples of this kind of thing. Now, um, let me recall a little bit what the Adam Silton model is. So, because we, we, this is an example of, of a tower of co-fibrations, uh, properly explained, if, if I manage to do so, and it's relevant to what we are going to do later. So we, if we start with a CW complex, which is simply connected plus something else, then we see a model of the space X. Well, we look at this DGA and we take a particular cofibron replacement. This cofibron replacement is quasi free, of course, and uh, well, the graded vector space of generators is in bijective correspondence with um, the cells of your space. So basically, uh, the, the indecomposables are the cellular chain complex. 
but you have higher differential terms. Uh, well, <clears throat> one of the ways of building the Adam Silton model is to do it by induction. So you have your cellular decomposition of your space and you start to build model of the lower skeleton and you go up and, and you can chase the maps, how to define them. Basically, if you have a, a, an attaching map, so let me say this more precisely. The differential is related to how you attach the maps and, and, and it is given by precisely this diagram. So if you have an attaching map for a cell, then you have a generator that corresponds to that cell and you have to define what the differential on this thing is. Who do you kill in the previous level? Now you have to do it in such a way that when you push to the homology of the loop space, this diagram uh, commutes here. So here you have the usual isomorphism between the homotopy groups of the N skeleton and the N minus one homotopy group of, uh, of the whatever space, the loop space. And here you have the Hurevich map. Um, so that's one way of, of building this thing. To give a very explicit example, which is nice for computations, is to take the Adam Silton model of the complex projective space. So for example, if you start with S2, a two sphere with a single cell, then the Adam Silton model will be a free algebra on a single generator of degree one less than, than this uh, sphere uh, and with zero differential. Now, if you go build a complex projective space, you start to attach um, one cell of each even dimension going up. Uh, and when you do that, you can see that, well, uh, the generators have this particular degree because they are related to two K cells and the differential is purely quadratic. And what you do is when you differentiate an element, uh, VK, then you put uh, in all possible ways, the twofold product of BIs and BJs that add up to K. If you go all the way up, then you get the Adam Silton model of uh, CP infinity. And well, okay. So let's go back. So I, I don't want to get this wrong. So the Adam Silton model works over the integers, but it is not functorial and it has some good things and some bad things. But anyway, in the same way that you have um, a cofibration sequence of spaces, the Adam Hilton model is also um, a cofibration sequence. As you can see in this example, whenever you attach a new generator, you are killing something uh, in, in, in the previous algebra, right? So you can filter this up and each thing is a, is a push out. Um, okay. So let's go back to what we wanted to do. Uh, how much time do I have left? So because I don't know if I'm going too fast or five. Uh, so you have a bit more than half an hour. Really? Well, then I, I've been going really fast. I apologize. Um, um, it's never a problem. We can uh, use time for, I mean, um, the, you have one hour or one hour and 15. It's not uh, exactly sharp. OK, OK. Um, yeah, probably I, I was thinking of uh, speaking more of everything, but um, yeah, anyway. So um, let's speak again more precisely about the spectral sequence that we are going to build. So what we do is um, the main technical theorem that we want to prove is that um, we are going to give a cellular decomposition of an algebra A. So we are going to, to find a cofibration sequence. So A is obtained from A0 by a sequence of elementary uh, cofibrations. And we are going to produce a spectral sequence which um, uses this filtration uh, in a clever way. Um, uh, well, the first thing, the target of this spectral sequence will be the homology of the derivations of A that vanish on A0. That's what this notation means, right? Um, now, if A0 is the base field, because you start with the base field, then you get the derivations of A. So in that way, this is linked to, to deformation complexes because you have derivation, complexes of derivations. And now the first page will be to play the same game, but with intermediate um, extensions. So we, you will consider derivations of some algebra that vanish on the previous one. And in that way, you can build up a spectral sequence. That's the idea. Now, um, before I speak about that, uh, let me speak about uh, tangent cohomology, 
also known as Andrequin and cohomology, depending to whom you speak, they will tell you that uh, you should call it one way or the other. Um, anyway, this is a cohomology theory, highly related to Hotschild complex and, and so on. So if you start with an algebra over an operand and an A module M, then, um, well, first we have to speak what is the complex of derivations. So derivation from A to M are linear maps because A and M are K vector spaces, but it's a linear derivation with respect to the structures that A and M carry. So that means that when you take um, N elements in A and you multiply them by using some operation of your operat in A and you differentiate, then that's exactly the same as differentiating each of uh, the elements uh, and then using the action on, on the module. Um, then this derivation complex is naturally a subcomplex of the OM from A to M, and it has the usual differential, which measures the, the commutativity of, of um, the derivations with the differential. So it's a co-chain complex. So here we will use a cohomological convention. Typically, this will not be a DGL because uh, M need not be A itself. Uh, so, what is tangent cohomology? Well, tangent cohomology is the homology in the sense of homotopical algebra of the derivation functor when you fix the, the second variable. So then you have to move your, your functor in the category of P algebras over A, which are morphisms from, from an algebra B to A. Now, um, okay. So the tangent cohomology of A with coefficients in M is some cohomology theory that I will compute. How do I do that? Well, first thing you do is you take a cofibrant replacement of your algebra, and then you uh, build the, the derivation cochain complex um, by replacing A by the cofibrant replacement. This is, gives, uh, so M is naturally a module of every thing, and then you take homology, that's it. It is well known since the work of uh, Gettler and Jones, I think, that whenever you are over a field of characteristic zero, then the deformation complexes that, that you consider here are equivalent, uh, weakly equivalent to those of Hostile, Harrison, and Chevalier Allenberg. So they give the same answer. Okay. Now we know what, um, because we want to, this is spectral sequence, we want to related to Andrequil and cohomology, that will be the target of the spectral sequence. But now we have relative derivations. So relative derivations are just, uh, if you have an algebra map from B to A, you can think that you have an inclusion, although it need not be. Then the derivations from A to M that vanish on the image of that map, which is what's written here, is the relative uh, complex of derivations. Remember that we want to give a cellular decomposition of our algebra. And we want to consider derivations on, on one algebra that vanish on a certain uh, subalgebra. So here is the theorem again. We will split our algebra A into a tower of co-vibrations, whenever we can do that, of course. And then we will produce a spectral sequence that has relative uh, derivations as pages and relative derivations as a target. Now, how to, how to use this, um, if we look at this uh, co-fibration sequence, we want to cleverly use it to produce a spectral sequence because there are obvious filtrations that you could use to produce some spectral sequence, but we are going to, to use the jacobi sariski sequence. Now, what is that? This is a result of um, algebraic geometry um, that might not be so well known outside of that field um, nonetheless, uh, well, you can prove the following. So if, if you have a sequence of maps of P algebras from B to A to A prime, um, and you fix coefficients, or well, I, I will fix a morphism of P algebras here, then you can build uh, an exact sequence on the left, like with the on factor. So you have, um, so you consider the derivations from the big guy to M, that vanish on this middle thing here. And then because B um, or 
it's not contained in A, but you know, you have a map from B to A. So derivations that vanish on A will automatically vanish on the image of, uh, of this map. So there is a natural inclusion here. And now uh, this map here, we take derivation from A prime to M and we simply restrict them to A. And that gives you an arrow there. Now, there is typically no way of going back. So this is not exact on the right, but in, in our framework, if you look and, and ask that this last map here is a co-fibration, then A prime is obtained from A by freely attaching a set of generators. So you can, uh, you can extend a derivation uh, in A prime by declaring it to be zero on the new generators of the co-fibrations. So you, you can split this uh, sequence. And then you have a short exact sequence. So um, whenever we have a cellular tower of co-fibrations like this one, and I've written there what, what that means, then we can apply this jacobi sariski sequence to triples of maps here choosing in some way. If you choose this uh, triple, then you can cook up a, a short exact sequence like this, and, and you can do this for every S. So you can, now it's everything is formal. So we saw before that you can produce spectral sequences from filtered uh, modules in, in the first talk this morning, but you can also have exact couples. So that's what we are going to do. Um, so if you have all those short exact sequences, then there is this formal procedure to obtain a spectral sequence, which is to produce an exact couple. To do that, what you do is to link all the possible short exact sequences by using the long exact sequence in cohomology. In that way, you can build a triangle in which each corner is exact. And to recognize who is D or who is E here, you just have to look at who is repeating in this short exact sequence. And to give the maps I, J, and K, you simply, uh, well, you use the maps defining the short exact sequences and the connecting map. So everything is completely explicit once you know uh, the inputs. And that's the, the main advantage. Now, I don't want to enter into detail of this thing because there are many indexes here. Um, so let me let me go back to something that I want to do. So the main takeaway from this is that out of a co-fibration sequence, we can get short exact sequences and you can put them all together to produce a spectral sequence by using exact couples. Now, let's speak about relative tangent cohomology because it's, this is what we really want. Um, so if we have an algebra map from B to A and we have an A module M, then what, what we do for relative tangent cohomology is the, the obvious thing. So we start with this map, we take cofibron replacement of each of the algebras, and we ask that there is a square like this where this is a, a cofibration now. Okay, so in this context, we take the complex of derivations from the cofibron replacement of A into M that vanish on the subspace uh, given by the cofibron replacement of B, and we take the cohomology of it. So that is the tangent cohomology of A with coefficients in M relative to B. And this is the object that naturally appears in our spectral sequence. Now, in terms of Andre Quillen cohomology, we can say that whenever we look at a P algebra map from some B0 to B, if we find a cofibron replacement of each of this map, so we have a cofibration at the higher level, and we uh, we make it be a tower, a cellular tower of cofibrations. So we have a possibly infinite uh, sequence of cofibrations. One, then we can produce with the thing that we were mentioning before a spectral sequence which is functorial on the module uh, side, which has as a target the relative uh, tangent cohomology of the algebra map we started with. And these applications to, to algebraic topology. Uh, now, uh, so let's study the Adams Hilton case to fix ideas. So, whenever you have a space X, you fix the Adams Hilton model of X, which is a free algebra with a differential, and, and you can filter uh, this algebra in the same way. So, you can make this cellular tower of cofibrations, like with the example of the complex periodic space. 
So you can use the degree cleverly there to, to do that. And well, because the space is simply connected, then we have that A0 and A1 are the base fields. So in this case, we are just, so the extensions are just attaching elements of a specified degree S. And then if you chase what the, what the meaning of the different objects is, um, the complex of derivations, you just write what it is, and it is naturally isomorphic to the set of linear maps because A is free from the set of generators to your algebra. And now asking that you have some conditions so on, you push everything around and you start to get from the derivation complexes, you start to get the convolution-like structure. Um, and so what I want to say now is how to read these pages in, in this Adam Silton case. So, um, so the derivations of a specified degree. Uh, so uh, so are we are taking coefficients in, in A, by the way, are just the linear maps from your generators that you're attaching to uh, elements of degree T in your algebra. And now asking that something is a co-cycle is asking that the image of a derivation lands onto cycles, and you can and you can write it like a convolution when you write here the homology. So what I want to say is that um, whenever you have the first page and you have the Adam Silton model, you can explicitly write all of these. And now the, the first differential and actually all the differentials are just given by a formal procedure, which is to follow the the exact couple. If you do that, the first differential can be seen to be just precomposing with the linear part of the differential in the Adam Silton model, which if you take to be minimal, then the first differential vanishes and you go directly to the second page. And well, we have an interpretation for cycles. So something is a cycle. If, if you can extend the derivation as a co-cycle to, to higher uh, filtration levels of, of your algebra. And um, then, uh, then well, you, you can, what I'm saying is that you can explicitly compute the second differential as well. So basically, if you have a, a, an element in the second page and it is a cycle for the first differential and you can represent it by a, by a linear map, which goes from your generators to your homology, and then um, uh, this extends as a co-cycle in an explicit way by just taking um, the extension by zeros and just applying the differential on your, on your derivation complex, which is explicit. And you can do the same for the next level. So whenever you have um, an element that survived to the second page, then that, that corresponds, that's represented by a certain co-cycle it ex extends to the next level as a cycle in an explicit way. And the differential is just applying the connecting morphism to this uh, extension, which is explicit, and so on and so forth. So the pages of the spectral sequence all look like this, and they can be explicitly computed as long as you know the Adam Hilton model and you're able to trace back all these uh, diagram chase. So now, um, I would really like to, to know what time do I have left because uh, maybe I can speak a bit more. So uh, in principle, that was all. Thank you, um, Jose. Um, well, you can, um, I mean, your, the length of your talk is perfect, I think. We just thank you okay. for your talk. Thank but you. if you want to comment anything else, uh, there are some... No, I, I was, um, yes. So what Pedro is mentioning is that, as he's saying, uh, if we go back to, um, so the, the choice of lift is, is canonical because one of the nice things here in this theory is that in this, uh, yes. So here, when, when we make the exact, what we are doing is uh, the canonical lift, we just declare the new generators to, to be zero. So, I mean, the comment is pertinent and, and it's, it's very nice to have that as well. So yeah, I don't know if there are any questions. On that. So, questions?
So you read you read comments, Pedro's comments from the chat, right? Fernando. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I wanted to to ask whether there is any um, any way of computing nice way of, of computing the any of the differentials. For instance, d two, which is uh, usually one the first complicated one. Uh, so, what do you mean? I mean the differential is explicit. Maybe I didn't explain myself. Well, yeah, in the construction yeah. of the spectral sequence, um, I mean. If you construct it from a complex or whatever, you have a, an explicit description of all differentials. Uh, but sometimes it can be given by things like massive products or things like that. I don't know if there is any relation here. Mm. No, I mean, the first one, I think I know what you mean. So the first differential is just to precompose with the linear part, and that's given. So you would like to, instead of saying how to go back and construct D2 explicitly, you would like to give a closed form of this thing. Sort of. Um, and I, I don't know. Um, we didn't really work out this. And I don't know if it is related to, to any massive product uh, thing, actually. Mm. But in the Adam Hilton model, you have the Jurevich map from homotopy groups to, to homology, right? And in mm -hmm. homotopy groups, you have the massive products. So one natural question is to ask uh, where mm. these go and how they go up uh, when you do the, from this exact couple, how, how they build up in the spectral sequence. But I guess that it's not easy to follow them <laughs> along. Mm, but uh, I mean, I know that when you have this uh, ellenberg moore spectral sequence or the, the Quillen spectral sequence, um, you can show actually relatively easy that the differentials are represented by either massive products or higher whitehead products. But here we are starting with the homology of the loop space. Yeah, so true. it is true that you have sort of massive products yes, but here, but they come from, from the massive products of X, but from the massive products of the uh, loop space of X. So I don't know how to, yeah. I, I don't know. I never thought about that. So maybe I should. Okay, thanks. I was just wondering. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the the Bowers, the Bowers uh, way of doing things. Uh, the, the calculations are, well, Fernando knows better than anybody. Well, uh, Fernando and Andy know very well. It's very difficult, but uh, you can get a lot of things out of them if you are able to perform them. More questions? So I would like to ask you, um, this spectral sequence looks like a good tool to compute the homology of derivations, right? The homology um, of what, sorry? The homology of, of the space of derivations. Mm -hmm. It does converge there, no? To, to the homology of derivation. But um, so I was wondering as a computational tool, so how easier is to get the, this tower of cellular configurations? Um, uh, I don't know what you mean. I mean, uh, so the, 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 if you have an explicit model of a space, then like a Sullivan algebra, you automatically have. You automatically have this. OK, this is this the, just the, these are just the, like, yeah, the huge extensions. Exactly. OK. And this is operatic in the operatic setting, or, or the last part yes. was for algebras. So any operate algebra with some conditions on the operate only. Yeah, so if you have a nice operate P, then you have this notion of uh, co-fibration. What, what is Which is case? just a K, KS so extension. In, in our case, we, we take non-DG operates. So if that's perhaps your question, okay. we were not like in your paper, uh, I know that you do uh, perhaps more, more delicate mm -hmm. analysis of that. In our case, we take a non-DG operate that has to be 
uh, reduced and connected for you know to to have things push off to infinity. Okay. Uh, I, it would be interesting to know uh, if if doing things more delicately with with your approach, perhaps you can extend this to to non to the geoparts. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay. So uh, let me thank uh, Jose again. Um, well, it was a very nice uh, morning session. Um, I wanted to use this opportunity, since many of you are here, to announce that all the videos of uh, yesterday's session are already online, and hopefully we'll keep the same rhythm, so uh, tomorrow we'll have today's videos. And we are back uh, for the afternoon session at 3.30 with a talk by Tashi on higher seagull spaces. So have a nice lunch break. <laughs>